Okay, so according to the schematic, uh, you got to look really, 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 and it's like impossible, but you can see how like seven and two are also, and you can see this just very, very, very subtle gray line uh, kind of pointing up to the, uh, there's like a little dash right there. It looks like a straight line. If you come far enough away, it looks like it's just going across it and you can't even see it, but there's just this little gray dash. It's, or, you know, the color of the wire and stuff like that, touching that pin and touching that pin, and it goes all the way across these guys. Uh, but also these wires right here uh, came, and I saw some pictures um, that are, you know, the twisted wires, and that's what I did over here. I assume that's going to help quiet it down and help with phasing and stuff like that from the, uh, uh, the 120 uh, cycle hum. But anyway, so just be careful when you twist your wires uh, to trace them. And I was lucky enough to where this one on the top right here, which is pin four, um, that actually ends up being on the right side to pin two. So I almost screwed that up, but I got lucky because I traced it from, here's the top, here's the next loop, here's the next loop, and then it follows up underneath that, and then it goes over to this one. So I got lucky. Now the trick is I'm gonna have to sit there and bridge, you know, a piece of wire between those guys because um, they're feeding all the other ones, so. But uh, that's how it should look, according to that map and a couple of the pictures. Okay, cool. So uh, anyways, um, I've got this bare wire and uh, this clear shrink tubing. Uh, where the hell did it go? Oh, here we go. So this was not too expensive. Um, it's just the, I guess this is 18 gauge, and it's just pure copper wire. So it's really rigid, so you can just pull it out as you need it and just kind of get a general idea and a length for it. And uh, basically, I was kind of confusing like how to cut these little strips for the shrink tubing and stuff like that, but it's actually pretty simple. What you do is you take these um, right here very carefully, a pair of, uh, you know, uh, grabbers and stuff like that, and just very slowly, do not grab and, and just start twisting and stuff like that. If you break them off, you will be very upset. Um, <clears throat> But basically just start running it through this side and then just cut the length of the tube you need and just run it through the loop. Keep it going through there by twisting these straight and then just got you've got the next piece and then you got the next piece. And so it just connects over here. And uh, also just a word of advice, these have two different pins. So you can actually put the resistors and those dies on two different sides. Um, and these do not. They're, they're a little bit wider, but for the thicker cables, it's harder to get through. Um, uh, where they're supposed to be, but uh, it, it's going to look pretty clean. Uh, I wish the wire was a little bit straighter, but it's coming out of a package that's, you know, obviously round, so it's going to be a little off, but I don't really care, but that's how I'm doing it. All right, so uh, my intuition has paid off because this uh, particular uh, wire, um, and I know it looks like bare wire right now, uh, but it actually does have this uh, clear shrink tubing on it. But this clear shrink tubing is so delicate, I don't know if you can see this over here, but there is a little bubble. Okay, so this stuff is really, really super thin. So I wanted to make sure because I had to bypass uh, pin, what was it, pin two to get to pin seven. So we're basically, this is pin seven, pin seven, pin seven, pin seven. So I'm gonna check the continuity between here and here. And, okay, well. Gotta turn my multimeter back on. Okay. So I touch here. And okay. Okay, so I'm 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 getting that. Okay. Touch over here. Good. Touch over here. Good. So those are all touching. But here's where I got uh, a little bit worried. I wanted to make sure that pin um, two which is just above this, isn't touching any of these contacts. So I'm touching this, you know, making sure that I'm getting good contact, you know, contact, and then, you know, touching this and touching this. But when I came over here, I did, just for a second, I heard the uh, the continuity going off between these two, and I tested all the other ones, and I was like, uh-oh, that is definitely touching that pin, and that would have been a major, major problem. So, um, what ended up happening is I had to just kind of move this wire just slightly off of that and, uh, you know, use the heat shrink, but I guess it melted through a little bit and there's just enough force on that particular pin 
that's causing the issue. So be very careful when you're going through this um, and make sure you test all of your continuity points. Make sure that this is obviously, it's gonna to be touching that one here and here. Those are good here, here, and then here and here. Okay, so all those points are definitely working and they're not touching anything else. Um, so go through it, make sure you use uh, the continuity um, and, and just be very careful because this wire, uh, obviously these are the, the power tubes, so they're gonna be putting out a bunch and uh, just this, I'll just bring this off so you can see, but just right here, you can see how close that was bumping up against that wire. And it just, I guess, uh, cut through the 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 uh, the, the clear, um, and it was just it was making a contact. So I, I did touch it between here and here, and it did make a sound. So I had to back it off. It's not doing it now, but I'm gonna put a little bit of extra protection between those two because I don't want this thing to get bumped around and all of a sudden explode. Very cool. All right. So what I have ended up with now. And uh, I'm not trying to toot my own horn as far as like my craftsmanship. This is me doing this for the very first time. Um, I've seen many, many other guys that do a much cleaner job of doing this type of stuff, but there's mistakes made along the way. It's kind of hard reading this physical diagram and not being a veteran of all of this stuff and being able to read schematics uh, very well. Again, this is a kit from eBay. Uh, it's decent, but you know, the first impressions of uh, somebody that has uh, so many mods that they've done so many of these amplifiers before thought that this was a very bad representation of how to do this. I have done enough to agree with them. It is not as clean as it should be. There are some confusion parts, uh, like as far as some of the resistors that were listed on this sheet that don't match up with this sheet and then have like things like this that do have a little bit of comment, but they don't really have instructions of like saying, hey, make sure to look out for that. That's why I'm doing this. So. Anyways, um, one thing that I would do differently um, going forward, you know, just I'm sure other people say that, well, then they do that by default, is that when I install these particular resistors, um, I would mark them uh, or put an asterisk next to them or check them off that I've actually installed them so that way there's no missing pieces. And at the end, you're not like, okay, what's that for? Um, and so we've got pretty much everything ready to go. All of the resistors are in. Uh, some of them I left open ended, like for example, like this, because there's going to be lead wires that come off the actual circuit board that have the wires already there. So I have to trace those back and make sure that all that stuff is in there. Um, but, you know, just be careful because there's going to be like, you know, certain types of things that are like open joints right here. These things will get soldered together. I just didn't solder them um, yet. Like, for example, like this wire is going to be also connected. Um, so there's a few things that you can do. Uh, to get better as you go. But I will say this, the shrink wrap, I know you see this, there's bubbles right there. Uh, there's no continuity issues. There's no metal touching anything. And I've, I've, I've tested all of these points and so there's no shorts. Uh, there were at some things, uh, a, a buddy of mine, Alex Callow, basically was trying to give me some advice saying, I don't twist, twist my bus wires. So the problem is, is just that I could not get around these particular pieces because of the shrink wrap was so thin um, that it just, uh, you know, there was, there was, points that I had to bend. So they're not twisted in any way. They're actually going straight. They just look a little twisted from pictures, like something like that. It looks like it's twisted or like that, whatever, but they're all straight. Um, and like, again, this thing looks like it's twisted, but it's not, it's actually on the same pole because they're, they're straight over the top of each other. I probably could have rose. In other words, bent it up like this, gone straight across. That would have probably solved that problem. But anyways, that's just how I did it. Um, I'll probably do it again on a different amp, but I've seen way worse builds than this. And so, like I said, if yours starts off like this, I would just say this, if it turns on, doesn't blow up and it works, eh, you know, it's not as pretty as it could be, but eh, you know, it's just a, it's a first project. So have some confidence in your, in your abilities. Uh, love what you're doing. Take your time with it. Check your work. Um, and, uh, just Go about your business, you know, that's why we, that's why we're doing this. You gotta love it. All right, so we're real close to going ahead and hooking up all the rest of these wires. Now, what I did is I put the wires uh, on the bottom of the board, um, specifically so I could easily touch these points in contact and stuff like that if I ever had to, uh, you know, do some voltage testing and, and those type of things. But um, what's making it a little bit, not say difficult, because I haven't done it yet, um, some of these points 
are pretty obvious. Like for example, you can see like this point goes to that point. So this wire is pretty obvious and uh, it's it's got plenty of room to maneuver and all that stuff. But sometimes we have some wires that are in line with each other. So we just have to be careful of not you know crossing those and making sure that it's not the right one. So what I end up doing is um, uh, I took, and I kind of already did this, like for example, this one right here is a black wire, which is commonly, you know, ground. So we know that it goes to this one. Um, but I'm just going to take a picture of the back of the board. So if I have reference, because once this thing is down, I won't know what it looks like from underneath to, to confirm it. So I'll just go ahead and do that. Um, but for example, here's a, here's a good example. Like these two right here. There's this one and then there's the ground. Now I know the gray one, I just made a mark on it right here just to make sure that I knew it was ground, uh, but that those are in line with each other. So they're not left and right where they'd be offset, but they're kind of like that. So uh, we just gotta be careful of where those are gonna go. And uh, that's about it. Um, I'm pretty confident in everything so far. Probably not gonna screw this down just yet, um, just because I may not have, have to flip it over and I'm probably gonna work my way back I'm going to go ahead and put in the power supply, the choke, and the output transformer first, get those wires through, get them uh, ready to go, and uh, connect them because we've got some leads here and a few other different places that uh, still have to be connected. But I don't think there's going to be that to, that much. I think the rest of them are really just going to go to uh, like tube sockets, like this kind of stuff. And uh, I mean, the other board, which is this guy. I think that's where some of the main stuff is going to be coming off of. So I don't really have to worry about too much of that other stuff. But uh, I think we're ready to go. I think we're at the uh, the final stretch. Very, very happy. And uh, hopefully we can get this thing chugging tonight. So I love finding all these little random parts. Um, I was looking in the bag and I was like, okay, is this for the choke or is this for this? Or I was like, what the heck did these things go for? And I was trying to think of which way they're supposed to be mounting and they didn't make any sense. But... I've always found like when I'm taking apart guitar parts and stuff like that, if there's three screws, you got to find where there's three places those three can screws and there's not four, but there's three. If there's five, then there's five screws for whatever. But then there's these. These are just, I think for the most part, unnecessary at this point because I don't have any kind of a case. But there's four of these, they're squared and they hook up to this. So that's what those things are for. Uh, of course, there was no instructions or pictures for that, but process of elimination, that's where it makes sense. All right, I'm super excited now. All of the parts have been used. All the wires are run through the grommets. Got a few little things I gotta connect. I'm gonna do the bigger wires. So these are the output transformer wires you can see from here. You've got the black, purples, and yellow on this side, which are pretty much the big fat ones. So we got, um, we got brown, blue, and Say brown, brown, blue, and uh, red come from that side. Now this one, I guess the color looks gray, but I guess it's brown. It's this is a bad color chart. So, anyways, it's pretty obvious from what we've got. We've got purple, black, purple, black, yellow. It's pretty obvious, and then. Uh, what is not obvious is that uh, this is supposed to be, I guess, a gray cable. So that's the only other one. So it's 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 pretty obvious. And then the other one is very clearly brown compared to the other one. So it's just not very good as far as the color charts. But uh, over here, we've got a few wires that we are not going to be using. Uh, so I just put them on this side. So on this guy, um, I ran the uh, pink sides over there. And then these are the purple ones. And again, this look more of a maroon color, something like that or whatever. But uh, I got everything mounted. Very, very happy. You just got a choke here, power, and these suckers. Woo! They are heavy. All right. So uh, as I made a couple of mistakes, soldering a couple of wires to something that was not supposed to be right, I thought, well, I can't see what's underneath it now because I wind it underneath. But I didn't even think to just grab my continuity. And sorry about that. But it's like, I wonder what this is going to. I can just touch that to this. And that should be it. Okay, so that's the overdrive gain cable. So you can see right here. So it's not this one now. I can pretty much see that's in line with that, but this is a good test. That's why I kind of soldered them over the top. Um, so I can see now, obviously, if you guys 
do your wires over here and solder them from the back, you would have avoided this kind of mistake. So I kind of thought I was doing this a little cleaner, but in retrospect, it does make sense to actually feed them from the top over the, over the, the, uh, the board instead of doing it like this, because this kind of gives me a little bit of a problem. Uh, solvable simply just by touching the contacts for here to here. And then, you know, that, that, that gets rid of that issue. Obviously you gotta do one more step. But uh, again, I'm an amateur. Uh, it's my first build and I'm pretty happy with it. I've only got a few more wires to go. Let's see, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14 wires to solder and I am done with this bad boy. All right, see you in a minute. All right, this should be it. Final point. And that is that. Got to go through everything and make sure everything is wired and continuity and all that kind of stuff. But that is that. I finally finished this sucker. Um, it's going to be amazing if it actually turns on the first time. Uh, I will tell you, there's some goofy, <laughs> there's some goofiness to this, uh, but uh, I'm pretty confident everything is where it's supposed to be. It is uh, not as clean as it could be, and I will make mistakes uh, or you know learn from these and, and improve my builds uh, from the future. But I learned already a ton from doing this uh, as far as cutting wires and get everything routed and stuff like that. But as far as how the build goes and and everything else, there's some just little things that, you know, I thought are a little bit strange. But uh, all in all, it's pretty rad, man. So uh, this is my first. So this is a pretty sophisticated amp, um, as you can imagine. Um, it's not like a just a little pedal um, or something like that. But... There's some things over here that don't really make all that much sense. I had to kind of guess they're not really labeled properly. Um, but at the same point in time, I just kind of had to deal with what I had to deal with and hopefully it works. It doesn't line up perfectly on the back. Uh, the switch is what it is, but I'm very excited. So um, I hope some of this stuff helped you out. Um, you know, just making a couple of mistakes from me on the way um, how I would do it the next time, how I did it this way. And, and, and I had, you know, not knowing what I, you know, starting with and stuff like that. But, um, you know, if you guys are fearing doing something large, it just takes you longer. I mean, realistically, it's like, you know, what's the difference between 15 solder points versus 500 solder points. It just takes you longer. So, uh, anyways, I encourage you to do what you can. Uh, I've got to build this test kit light bulb thing, uh, you know, for voltage and stuff like that to make sure everything works for it, put the tubes in there uh, and, uh, and read into that. But uh, we are done. Woo!